point said. You can only sleep at night. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, I don't know how this is gonna work. I uh, I'll know in a minute, but uh, I'm running Stream Elements. It the only reason I switched is it is supposed to have a lower CPU footprint, and that means I might have less drop frames. And I also upped up the uh, I ramped up the uh, audio, so I should have better audio coming out of this now, as long as the CPU can. Uh, for all the Lord of the Rings fans out there, I'm basically going to be doing uh, the Misty Mountain Cold. Uh, I'll try and do more cheerful songs, but I'm just, I'm just, I usually pick the song right before the stream.
also going to try and pick songs that my voice can do. <coughs> Misty Mountains Cold and Cavern Must away here we go. It's flaming spread. Dreams like torches. I found a short version of it, so I didn't have to torture you guys too much. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I think that's actually a hook because I advertised it on TikTok before I came on saying that it was singing so bad it would shut down a Korean karaoke bar. Okay, now part of the reason why I think this thing is using such a lower CPU footprint is it's not giving me a screen to let me know how the stream is going. So I will have to check it on my tablet. It'll take a minute. Hey, welcome aboard. We got three viewers now. <laughs> it isn't telling me I've dropped any frame rates yet. I might have to go back to just regular OB. stream elements itself is going to work I uh, I can tell for a fact that as of right now I've had better hang on I might I'm gonna like shut off if I didn't so I'll then it up I'm gonna, sometimes this smooths out after it's up and running. I don't know why. But just go with it and see what happens. Uh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I, uh, I was, I've been trying to make like four shulker boxes of, uh, I am going to turn the video settings down for the next stream. This isn't working. Uh, I got a feeling it's the the increase in the video or the audio, so I'm gonna have to turn the quality back down. But uh, I have currently made two shulker boxes. I got a third one full. I've just got to make a fourth one.
that's what I was doing before the stream. I was actually just uh, fishing so I'd get the supplies I needed for the potion. Oh, if you ever want to know why we can't get uh, you ever want to know why we can't get uh, legalized drugs for municipal, uh, municipal or uh, and recreational use, watch First Amendment auditors and watch uh, sovereign citizens. These fucking clowns, they sit or, sit at home and smoke up a bunch of hand sanitizer. I'm joking, and then they go out and just basically fuck with people with their cameras and then they wonder why we can't get legalized drugs because this is what happens when people get fucking high. Municipal purposes. This is an idea I've been kind of toying with, and this is the way I tend to work in Minecraft. I uh, I don't usually plan stuff out. I just wait until the moment. There's a, God, it's, his YouTube channel is, uh, yeah, I, I'm switching over from uh, CloudBot to Stream Elements for the bot, and I shut off the CloudBot one because I didn't want it competing, and none of the modules are currently set up. I don't have uh, Stream Elements completely set up, apparently. I thought, I thought the bot itself would run because I saw that it had, it had actually come into the chat. But it's not working yet. waiting to see the reaction. It, it's absolutely true. And the thing is, you really can't judge me until you hear the whole story. But uh, somebody put on a, a TikTok video, like they wanted to know the, the worst thing you had ever done. And so I commented in the, I, I put in a comment that I set somebody on fire at a party. And uh, 
you, you really can't judge me without knowing the whole story. And I honestly think that if I just don't tell you the whole story, then I'm safe because you can't actually judge me. But uh, there was a there was a girl I kind of like. She invited me to come out for spring break. She had uh, she'd interned in my town. Uh, for a local company and then she invited me for uh i think she had she was kind of we were kind of hanging out and i think she had a boyfriend and she uh okay she was still i mean i don't want to she wasn't like fat fat but my understanding from talking to her friends is she put on like five pounds or ten pounds while she was there for the summer and her boyfriend didn't want anything to do with her when she got back. That's why I think I got invited out. And there was this guy that really liked her. And he was hitting on her like a whole fucking time. Well, that, I instantly didn't like the guy. And uh, he got drunk at the one party. But we were I was out there for like the better part of a week. And uh, she... Uh, He was going around drunk at the party trying to impress everybody and I'm pretty sure that everybody knew he was a fucking idiot and they just didn't want to they were they were too polite to tell him why well, didn't suffer from that and like the first thing he did and all it was and and again I think maybe not everybody but I think most of the people knew he was basically looking for an excuse to get her alone because he wanted to fuck her and uh what happened was there was somebody at the party and he made a big deal out of it. He made a big deal out of how he treated this girl so badly or some shit like that. And uh, he was like, oh, well, let's just, let's go over to their place and I'll kick his ass. And, and she was like, oh, okay. Um, She got the whole, she got like a whole group to go. And, uh, and he made this, oh, he, I get over there, I'm going to kick his ass. And I, well, as soon as we got about a block from the place, he started kissing everybody's ass. Um, cause it was pretty, it was pretty close to showtime. And, uh, then, you know, he, he started backing off. So it was, it was like a no big deal. It, he went out. And, uh, and I'm really not saying he should have, but I also wasn't the one running my mouth that I was going to do all this shit when we got there. Well, then later in the party, again, he was trying to impress everybody. He, he basically poured like 151 on his arm and he wanted somebody to set him on fire. And he literally went to everybody in the party telling them, hey, you know, set me on fire, set me on fire. Well, the girl that we both kind of liked when she got up to him, when, when he got up to her, she goes, well, I won't do it. But she pointed at me and she goes, he will. And I took the matches and I looked at him. I go, look, I go, I'm only going to ask you this once. And I go, I've got all these witnesses. This is before cell phones were a big deal. That's how old I am. And I go, I'm only going to ask you this once. But I go, are you really sure you want me to do this? And he said, yeah, go ahead, man. About a half a second later, his arm was just a fucking blazing. Everybody was in shock. And he was flipping out. His arm was flying through. I mean, he was screaming. He went into full panic mode. And uh, I ended up, like, I grabbed him by the arm, slapped him across the head to calm him down, kind of like they do. flaming arm, too. And I literally dragged him to the kitchen and, you know, put it under the sink. So, I, you know, put it in the sink so I could rinse him off and put it out. And he was pretty much fucking, uh, he was a little puppy on the porch. He was a little pup pissing off the edge of the porch the rest of the night. He didn't run his mouth anymore the rest of the night. So I think everybody was grateful for that. But it also guaranteed nobody in their right mind was going to fuck with me for the rest of the party. It was actually kind of, I was like elevated to God mode at that point. I can't remember if that was the night or it was one of the other nights. She was, uh, she was like an aerospace engineer. Uh, and she had all these friends that were uh, were engineers too, but some of them were like, I don't know what they're, I don't know if they were, they were, engineers, they were, engineers, they were, they were working on like a fucking, uh, well, it was a car. 
And the car they the car they did, they were showing you uh, how they were taking a regular car and modifying it. All the stuff they had to weld in to make it like re uh, legal for the uh, for the thing. And uh, and one of the things that they uh, they talked about was uh, they go, if you ever get a chance, you got to party with uh, chemical engineers. And so what they were doing was they they were explaining as far as all the stuff would still work. Um, if you take, it was basically, they said it's something you could buy at Walmart. It was basically a pool cleaner, some kind of a thing for the pool. If you mix it with brake fluid, what happens is, if you remember them old snakes, like when I was a kid, they, yeah, you light them and then they just sort of bubble up and foam all over the place. You get them on 4th of July. They kind of act like this stuff and it would sit there for a minute. And they said, if you want it to work faster, all you had to do is put the brake fluid in the microwave and warm it up a bit. And uh, what would happen is, uh, when it finally got to its critical temperature for mixing, a flame of jets would come out. They were using Dixie cups. Uh, a flame of jet, a jet flame would come out of the, the cup. It would just shoot up a little rocket flame. And then this shit would just foam up out of it. It was actually, they said, man, we partied with these chemical engineers and the shit that they did was just unbelievable. Yeah, next stream, I got to remember to turn the, the audio settings back on. I think it will run better if I do that. Now, that was back. Oh, shit, that was back in the 90s. That was pre-9-11. Nowadays, if they caught you doing that, you probably end up on a fucking terrorist watch list. I want to take it up to 85. All of this might get changed. I have no idea how this is going to look. Okay, now, now this is actually a real story, but I'm going to, most of them aren't going to be like this, but it, uh, there's a joke. Uh, the, uh, I was pretty, like, when I was healthier and I was younger, I was pretty heavy in the martial arts. And uh, two of the guys that we would go to, like, now I had a friend, he actually moved out to California, and he trained under a guy directly. Like, he, tra you know, he would basically show up, like, so many days a week and train right at this guy's house. And this guy later on got uh, hired by the military to create a program for the Navy SEALs, but this would have been probably five or six years before that happened. Uh, when I went out, I mean, I was like kind of a weekend guy. I would train with these guys on the weekend several times a year. He actually lived out there. And uh, when I was, you know, this was a few years ago, maybe like 10 years ago, but I was at his house training. And uh, I, we, we asked him the story of how that happened. And like, uh, he ran his classes right out of his uh, house. And he said, uh, he got done the one day, he was sitting down for a bite to eat with his girlfriend, and it was like, knock at the door, and it was all these fucking Navy guys in uniform, and they're like, you know, you gotta understand, this guy, you know, he, he was a little, let's say, cavalier with certain controlled substances, I, I don't really want to say too much. And from what he said is they showed up and they said they were interested in him and coming working with them at the Navy. And he goes, well, he goes, I don't know what to tell you guys. He goes, I hate getting up in the morning. Uh, he goes, I'm not cutting my damn hair. And he goes, and I'm not going to pass a piss test. And I, this is what he told us. He told him, he's like, yeah, I don't like getting up in the morning. I'm not cutting my hair and uh, I'm just not going to pass a piss test. And they said, look, he goes, we know what you had for breakfast. We're well aware of what's going to show up in your urine if you were tested. Uh, we, we knew that before we came here. And uh, like two of the guys that we would go and see at seminars both trained under Bruce Lee. Uh, one of them's dead now. The other one's still alive. He might be the only one of Bruce Lee's students that's still alive. 
Um, he's the only one left still alive that actually ran one of Bruce Lee's school when he was alive. And uh, there were these guys we used to run into. Uh, actually, I might tell a bunch of these stories. There, some of them are funnier than others. Um, the uh, there were these two guys. They were from Iowa. And these two guys, we found out like several years later, they, uh, when they went to these things, they had, uh, they had what they called the Dick of the Trip Award. It was this little stuffed parrot that they had with them. And whoever did the most embarrassing thing uh, had to take it home and keep it with them until the next seminar. That that was one of their little jokes that they had going. And the one guy usually took it home. And the and I'm not going to get into names cuz I'm not I'm not about outing these guys or just, you know, on the off chance cuz they know who I am, they might someday what and, and I'm not trying to out anybody. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I'm just trying to tell the story cuz I think it's fucking hilarious. Um but normally the one guy he was the blonde guy he usually took it home and the dark haired guy he actually took it home it was like one of the rare times where he actually got to claim it uh they were at this thing and the one the one instructor uh he's the one that's still alive he's got a school and again i don't want to get into names i don't want to you know just get dragged into the both the politics and the i just want the funny story well, this guy, he likes to give a history lesson while he teaches. So you're not just learning how to kill somebody. You're learning the history and the culture and everything else behind it. If that, I don't know if that makes a, a difference or what, but that's the reality. of it. And uh, what happened is he was at the blackboard because the one place he went, they, they kind of liked this. I was the same way. I kind of like these episodes where he'd start talking about the history and shit of it. 
And uh, what happened was he was at the blackboard. He was, you know, writing stuff out, getting ready to, to fill them in. It gave everybody a little bit of a break, too, because these things were like, you know, four or five hours in the morning and then four or five hours after lunch. And a lot of the people drank like a drank like a you know, lot. So they were usually hung over. And so it was kind of a nice little break. Well, what happened was right when this guy, there was a break in the, the break in the noise, there was nobody talking. And this guy was sitting on like a wood floor and he just dropped ass and just ripped one. And he, uh, everybody heard it. Everybody heard it. And there was a little bit of chuckling going on. And the guy at the bulletin board goes, yeah, it's a natural, it's a natural thing. Everybody farts. And that's when everybody lost. It. That was the one time the guy had to take the dick of the trip home uh, award home with him. Anyways, these guys, you know, they're from Iowa. That's where they were from. And we always used to give them shit, you know, about having sex with uh, sheep or whatever, because they were from Iowa. And the one time we were doing, we usually joked with the blind guy. And the one, guy, one time we were joking when the dark-haired guy was there, he, uh... He made the comment because we were talking about, you know, get, and we, we had a whole thing going on. We were talking about they had Velcro gloves and all this other shit. And uh, I don't think I'm mixing up two stories. It's entirely possible that I am. But uh, we were joking about these guys, uh, you know, using, using Velcro gloves to have sex with sheep and stuff like that. And the dark haired guy just dead serious. He goes, Oh no, he goes, just take them up on the roof. He goes, uh, they'll push back. And we're like, oh, that's just wrong. That is just absolutely disgusting. But he he threw it out there and we're just like, okay, we're not joking about it. which is probably his whole point, but we're just not joking about this anymore. One of the other stories that we had from this, uh, there were these guys, um, just like anything else, there's politics and bullshit with everything. And uh, back in the day, there was one of the instructors, uh, who's one of one of Bruce Lee's students. Uh, he uh, he was really heavy into grappling. He was kind of the grappling specialist of uh, of the group, and like. We would go there, and I, I heard I heard this kind of thing more than once, because that was his forte. He was also really good at boxing and kickboxing. The only thing is, uh, he didn't do too much of the kickboxing anymore because he'd been in a car accident, and ever since they put that, ever since he had that accident, they had to put a pin in his hip because how bad the accident was. He really couldn't kick anymore. We were at one of these things where. Uh, a week-long uh, camp. We were doing stuff every day, and then, you know, we were all drinking and stuff uh, at the campsite uh, at night. Um, my instructor did that once or twice. He lost his ass on the second one. He lost a lot of money, so he didn't do it. One of the other instructors kind of took it over, uh, and he just does it himself. He doesn't try to bring in all the high-name talent. But uh, they had this old video of, like, Bruce Lee's backyard group. And the you know the there some of us knew the the history of it. They had made this. It was like a hunk of a wall with shoulder straps on it. Thing weighed a couple hundred pounds. Like if you if you get into the history of it, like Bruce Lee, he had certain people who could pay him for his teaching. What they would do is they would do stuff for him. And like one guy made him a six hundred pound heavy bag. 
basically fixed it up so they could hang it for me. Built something that would support it. Uh, somebody else made all this stuff the way... This one I had never read about. I heard Dan talk. And uh, it was this thing you could wear and you could take like full power kicks to the groin. It was all engineered. And he had actually tried to find somebody that recre could recreate it and sell it because he wanted to market it. And the guy that built it was like apparently some kind of a genius because he took it to good people and they couldn't figure it out. They uh, they absolutely had no clue how to fix, you know, how to build it. And then he said he thinks somebody stole it because he hasn't been able to find it since. And uh, But he had this thing, it was you'd wear it in front of you and it weighed several hundred pounds plus your body weight. And when Bruce Lee would hit this thing, the person would just go flying. And you had all these other guys. Uh, it, was, it was a black and white, it was 35 millimeters, so there was no sound to it. You had all these other guys that would hit it and sort of bounce off and it would barely move. Well, there was this tall, lanky, blonde guy, real thin. And he was the only one that could move it almost as much as Bruce Lee. And we're sitting there and we're like, who the hell is that guy? We were all just like ooing and eyeing. And then uh, the, it was the guy, you know, uh, it, was the, it was the instructor that we were there for. And he's like, oh, I don't, I don't know who that guy is. And then we all started recognizing the similarities between his. And it's like, oh my God, that's this guy when he was young before the accident. See, a lot of us all, all knew him as like a boxing and a grappling guy. We forgot that he was one of uh, Ed Parker's Kempo black belt team. Really fucking a tremendous kicker. And uh, But anyways, he, he had this following. There were these guys, I think they were from like the Colorado area. And I don't mean it in a bad way, but they were, and I'm going to call them camp followers, and that's really a horrible analogy. But they were more like the dead fans, where they would just basically go anywhere to see this guy. And every now and then you'd hear guys like these or other real hardcore grapplers. They'd be like, hey, you know, we've gone and seen this guy, and he's he's not teaching what you're teaching. His JKD is a little different. And then you'd hear Larry, you know, real polite, like, well, you know, there's many different ways to get to one location. He just takes a different path. You know, he was really respectful about it. And uh, these guys from Colorado, one of the guys we knew, he was uh, he was a Dose Paris, a Screama guy from uh, another part of our state. Uh, he came in for one of the seminars, and uh, he uh, he ended up rooming next to these guys, and he was explaining to us that uh, these guys were kind of. I don't want to say like crazy. They were like dedicated grapplers because he ended up in the room next to him at the hotel. And he said what these guys did for, for kicking back, like some of us would play hacky sack, go to the strip clubs, whatever. What these guys did to unwind after the seminar is they would sit there and drink and take turns choking each other out because he could hear them through the walls where they were struggling to keep from being choked out for as long as possible. And, uh, it's like some next level shit there. That really is. Respawn point said. You can only sleep at night.
I don't think I got enough blocks to to do all this. I don't think I got enough. I'm gonna have to like, I'm gonna have to like destroy a couple deserts. I think to get enough. I'm gonna have to destroy a couple deserts to get enough stuff for this. But I just want to get the thing started, and then. Uh, but there's a guy. Uh, Q Fallen Builds or Fallen Builds is his YouTube channel, and I watched a couple things that he built, and I liked. There was an element of it that I kind of liked, and I want to use. Uh, more often. Um, it ends up looking pretty nice. Oh, I'm not choking on anything. That's that's the mic. I'm actually feeling pretty good, and I'm going to probably cancel this one at an hour, even though I'm feeling good, just mostly because I want to get these settings tweaked a little bit, and I figure an hour is enough to go when it's not really working all that well. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it by Thursday, because I think I might have to do snow tomorrow, but I will try to have either, I'll either give up on stream elements, or I will have stream elements up and running, and... Uh, have that up and running uh, by Thursday or Saturday, I hope. I'll get the remaining things I have to get done, done and see if I can get that thing working. Might change the palette on this later. Right now, I'm more interested in getting the shape right, and then if I don't like the colors, I can change it to something else. But, but I'm getting rid of the sand. I'm putting down dirt. I would still like some of this to be the uh, sandstone colors. Oh, there's a YouTube channel. Uh, it's called The Lawful Masses, I think is the name of it. It's uh, He's an actual lawyer. He deals mostly in copyright law. And uh, he said that Comcast got hit with, and it's B, you know, B is in boy, 
but they got hit with over a billion dollar uh, judgment for copyright violations. And I don't know the whole story of it. But uh, it was a billion dollar settlement because apparently they uh, normally, if you are a provider like YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitch, so on and so forth. You uh, you have immunity from these lawsuits. If they want to, if they want to get paid, they got to go after. Copyright strikes, and they finally. And this might be part of the reason why he finally got let go. But uh, they normally have protection because they're not actually the one uh, publishing it. They're just hosting it. Well, the way this guy explained, they only have that as long as they follow certain provisions in the law. And one of them is uh, they have to they have to set a policy and enforce it. And uh, Comcast has like a, a 13 strike policy, meaning you can fuck up 13 times before they take any disciplinary action on you, if I'm understanding it right. And it's not that they they didn't have it. It's just they weren't following it. Or what they do is they'd slap somebody on the wrist, they'd kick them out, and then they'd let them back in. And they, so that's why they lost their immunity on this. So they got hit. I think it was Sony that hit them with like, a, and they're uh, they have to they have to bond it until after the appeal. But they are they are appealing it. And the way this guy talked, usually when you see these corporations appeal it, you'll see the amounts come down. And he was talking about one of the I think it was like Exxon. It was one of the oil companies. They got hit with like over a billion dollars in damages from a spill. And then when it went to appeal. It got dropped down to like 250 million or something like that. So he goes, it's likely going to come down, but he goes, it's still going to be a hell of a payday. And uh, that kind of busted me up. But he was basically saying, well, yeah. He goes, it, he goes, reading the judge's rulings on it, it sounds like they weren't complaining that their their standards were too too lenient. It's just that they weren't even following them. But I'm like, that's a that's a huge fucking nut to get hit with. Uh, is, mm -hmm. There we go. I gotta get some emeralds. I had like the better part of a stack of uh, glowstone, and I lost them when I lost all my stuff. And just for the record, I've got. Got my armor turned back into netherite. I got netherite sword. I got netherite pick. I went and did some uh, netherite digging last night, and I'm slowly getting... If it was a real big rush, I've got the netherite. I'm just digging it up to replace it. and uh, But I'm slowly getting my netherite gear back. BC Snowball is sleeping in a bed. Hey, thanks, Just Snowball. To dawn. All players need to sleep in beds. Hey, for everybody's there, put like a thumbs up or a, a happy face in chat 
if you think that whole GameStop thing was fucking hilarious, I'm sorry. Um, the 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 people that were involved in that did nothing that vulture capitalists and hedge fund managers haven't been doing for decades. But as soon as it started hurting the big guys, they shut that down and that shit is wrong. That clearly showed that Wall Street's being treated like a rigged casino for the rich and powerful. That shit is wrong. Um, and I have no idea how that's going to play out, but that just seems wrong. Most of this stuff over here that you can see, I've done that for glass, um, for glass and stuff. This is the first time I've been chewing this up so I can have uh, uh, limestone. This might not get built. It's definitely going to take a while, but... They had uh, they had one of these uh, hedge fund guys. He was literally damn near in tears on the news, crying about all the damage and stuff that was done. And it just made me all I could think of. If you've ever in it, if you if you're younger and you've never seen it, it's an old movie. It's got Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd in it. It's called Trading Spaces, and uh, it's called Trading Space or Trading Places. Uh, it was made in the eighties. And all I could think of were those two greasy fucking old guys that were in there. What they did was they had a bet. And they took a look at Dan Aykroyd's character, who was raised in the right family, uh, came from a good family, raised at the proper schools, Ivy League, had the perfect life. And uh, they took Eddie Murphy. This is a guy that got arrested uh, for stealing and all this other shit. And they wanted to see what would happen if they engineered some bullshit to flip their lives. So what they did is they framed Dan Aykroyd of embezzling or stealing or something, and he lost everything, his house, his fiance, and all this other bullshit. And uh, what they did is they elevated Eddie Murphy, and they they kind of taught him how to do things. And they you found out that they ruined both of these guys' lives for a dollar bet. They were only betting a dollar. When I when I saw the video of that guy crying about the shit that was going on, all I could think of was those two greasy fuckers in that movie. And then if you didn't see that one, but you saw Coming to America, when he gives that bag full of money to them two homeless guys, hey, thanks. Uh, when he gives that bag of money to them two homeless old guys, those were the two guys from uh, from Trading Places. And they're like, Mortimer, I'm still not speaking to you. It's like, we're back because they had a sack full of money. But, uh, oh, my God, that was just so delicious watching that guy. And, you know, Bernie Sanders, God bless that old guy. He's sitting there when he when he was commenting, he was asked about that guy crying. He's like, cry me a river. He goes, you guys have been pulling this crap for decades and somebody actually did it to you and we're supposed to feel sorry for you. I don't think so. Those guys that were doing it now, I think it might be more, but the initial assessment was that at least five billion in, in wealth had been wiped out because of what they did on that. Uh, God, I think it's, uh, I don't follow it. I'm not going to follow it, but I think it's called uh, Wall Street Bets on Reddit or something like that.
And, you know, and another thing, when you talk about that movie Trading Places, they were talking about futures, which is commodities like orange, you know, and orange, frozen orange juice was the big thing that, but like oil, any of that, that that's your commodities. That's stuff that's where uh, what they were doing was uh, what they call options trading. But they, there's a lot of similarities, like the little bit I read up on options trading so I can know more about it. And this was years ago. When you watch the movie and they explain how futures are traded, options are real similar. It's a real similar thing. So if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about what happened on Wall Street recently, that's actually a pretty good movie because the 10, 15 minutes where they explain how things work, uh, that's pretty much it. They, they explain it fairly well in general terms in that movie. See, the funny thing is, uh, there's a guy on CNBC, or at least he used to be. I haven't watched him in a long time, but uh, I'm actually a little bit of a fan of his. I've read several of his books. Uh, it's uh, Kramer. I can't remember what his first name is, but uh, he's got a TV show called Mad Money. And reading one of his books, see, this is a guy that grew up, he was a business guy. And he had kind of learned the ropes from his dad, because his dad had been a... So he knew spreadsheets, he knew inventory, he knew valuation. And uh, I, you know, this is like really, I'm actually feeling pretty good today. A lot of these streams, I do this, I'm really lightheaded. I'm focusing on the game. And if I don't, I'll get killed. I'm actually, uh, I'll probably get hit with the creeper for saying this, but I'm actually having a really good day. So tomorrow's going to, it snows tomorrow, I'm going to shit for it. Yesterday, I wasn't doing that great. Uh, but he understood valuation. He understood the, the the spreadsheet, the economics, the you know the the nuts and bolts of running a business. And he was talking about when he first started working in um, when he first started working in the stock market. Um, he didn't understand the stock market, and this is part of because this was something I was watching at Zuma Boyd's uh, channel. And he was talking about how he did. There were certain things about it that he didn't understand. Yeah. Oh, we got Bernie in the chat. Thank you. Um, we uh, he didn't understand how the stock market were, or the options trading, and he wasn't. He was calling them the shorting, but he didn't understand like because he understood like with stocks, stocks went up, stocks went down, and he he didn't understand some of the mechanics. And I kind of put a comment in the chat that. Um, if you want to know more about it, I told him, look up options trading because I go, you can also go long. I go, they're talking about going short. And basically the difference is you're either betting for the stock price to go down or you're betting for the stock price to go up. Um, the big thing with shorting a stock is there's no upside. Uh, in, in theory, your losses could be limitless because when you're buying a stock, if you buy a stock for $30, the most you can lose on that stock is $30. That's the absolute most because it can't go below zero. But when you are talking about what happened with GameStop, there is theoretically, you know, that thing can go really high. You could buy it for $10, and I, I think they drove that stock price up to like $400. So you can lose... Uh, when you're dealing with shorting options for shorting a stock, you can lose a fair amount of money because that stock really doesn't have a limit. Where when you're going long, there's a finite amount you can lose because the low, you know, the stock can't go into negative numbers; it can only hit zero. So if you're if you're viewing your options betting on the price going up, and you need it to go up, well, if it goes down, you can only lose the value of the stock when you put the option in. Um, so shorting the one is the more risky by far. And uh, but I and I mentioned, you know, hey, you know, that trading places, that would be a good movie to watch because I go that it, it it's a real similar to how futures work, commodities work. And but I told him, I go, you know, my understanding of it is when you short these stocks, it hurts, it can potentially hurt the company. And it can potentially hurt the workers if it's liquidated or if it's, you know, basically sold or, you know, and they basically, you know, like, let's say they're going to buy it just for the name and they're going to lay everybody off. So it can actually hurt the company. It can hurt the workers. 
it might be something they should really think about getting rid of because this was something they were talking about this past week that the whole stock market Response was set up said, to help companies. You can only sleep at night. Um, you know, these companies could go public. They could put it on the stock market and that would help them raise capital that they could use to improve the business, uh, market it, improve it, expand it, buy new equipment. And it was never intended originally for people to just use it like a gambling casino and, in fact, harm the company. Because if they if they short this thing enough, uh, the stock price physically isn't tied. And that's what I was getting into over what Kramer said. This is a tough subject. Um, but they, you know, if it makes the company look weak, see, then they could be, like, hostily taken over by another company, by a vulture capitalist or whatever. And it can have some real world, in it isn't just these guys making money, it can have some like real world effects on the company. Okay, I don't know what happened. I am still streaming. I'm going to see if I can get back in. I don't know if I can. This happens. Sometimes this happens when the server goes down, and sometimes it's just a glitch. What I'm going to do is just so I don't broadcast the server name, I'm going to go ahead and just put this in an intermission for a minute and see if I can get back on the stream, uh, the, the server. From why join the game? And uh, I'm going to wait and see if this works. But no, the... Uh, so I did explain that, and he he like he highlighted the comment and liked it. But see, the thing with Kramer in his one book, he explains that he didn't understand it because he didn't under because he understood how to research a company. Okay, it's telling me that I can't rejoin the world. This might be the end of the stream. But uh, the. Uh, he did not understand how the, and he, he was asking the guys like, well, yeah, but he goes, uh, I know how to value the company based on its From inventory and all this other stuff. And he goes, uh, I don't understand how you guys are valuing it. How does the, you know, he didn't understand why the price was moving when nothing changed in the, the stock. And the guy, he goes, oh, okay, this is the only way I think I can explain it to you. What he did was, uh, he told his, this was back in the day before they had it completely computerized. They still had that ticker tape that would spit out the prices, a lot of stuff. But he basically told his uh, secretary to put in an order for a certain company. And it was a big order. And then they sat there and watched. As they bought stock, the price went up. And... Uh, and he explained to the guy that, you know, just, just by buying the stock, you can drive the price. And, okay, we're back on. But that was one of the more telling things in the book. Well, then when you look at these hedge funds, when they're shorting these stocks, they have the same effect. Just the fact of them putting in these shorts can affect the price of the stock and it's not really fair to the company.
you know, and this thing happens with oil all the time. Um, I was reading this was like oh, shit back in the day because uh, this was something Bill Clinton did. And I don't want to get into the pipe. If you don't like them, that's fine. You're free not to like them because this is not a political. I'm just trying to talk about the market forces. But this was something Bill Clinton did because you had people that were and they I don't think they were doing it to politically screw up his career. Um, they just wanted to fuck with the oil prices like they like the, the shorting and everything else. And they wanted to do that with oil while he was president. And again, I don't think it was like personal towards him. It's just what they did. The same way these hedge funds and everything manipulated uh, the game stock. You know, they're, oh, we're going to short this and we're going to drive down the price because they figured it was going anyways. They were just going to speed it up a little bit would be my guess. Um, and that's what they were going to do with oil. They were going to they were going to fuck with the oil price and drive it up. See, they were betting on it going long at that point. Well, then what he would do is he would use the uh, he would use the strategic oil reserve and he would sell some of it off. And because he flooded it into the market, it would drive the price down. Well, then when they and again, because it, it wasn't like the price was going up naturally. It was because these future traders were fucking with him. And so what he would do is he would flood the market and drive the price down, which would do basically the same thing that was done to these guys over uh, GameStop. And then every time they flexed, every time they tried to drive that price of oil up, that's why gas prices were so low under him. And then, uh, you know, it wasn't continued by the Republican uh, administration. And they did a few other things which affected the markets. And that's why gas prices went up so bad. But for like the eight years Clinton was in there, because... Basically, every time they tried to drive the price up with their futures trading, which is real similar to the options trading, he'd fucking just spank their ass with the, uh, and then he'd wait for the price to go back down, and then he'd refill the uh, strategic oil reserve. And he kept the he kept them from fucking around with the market, and that's exactly what these uh, Wall Street bet guys did. They they saw these guys fucking around probably with a company they liked. It's like, hey, we like GameStop. We buy stuff from GameStop. We don't want them fucking up GameStop. And it's basically the same thing. And and I was reading about that back then. That these futures traders, they are manipulating the price with their futures trading, but yet none of them ever take any shipments. Like, um, they're not taking a shipment of oil. It, like. This video, these videos I've been watching where this guy buys um, Amazon return pallets, he's actually taking possessions of those. And then he's reselling them, hopefully going to make any. He admits some of them he loses money on, but for the most part, he can usually make a couple hundred bucks off of every one of them. And, you know, it's not that. These people are basically trading oil and other commodities, and they're, they're affecting the price with it. And they're never taking possession of it. They're never they're never a middleman. They are just su sucking money out of the market. And to me, maybe this shows that that should just stop. Because uh, I've been hearing a lot of talk about that, that there is just no value added to what they're doing. And it's absolutely true. Oh, my God. I'm trying to get off of this into something a little happier for me. Somebody put up a video on TikTok, and it was uh, all the thing was uh, start a start a start a fight with nerds uh, with with one phrase or whatever. And the chick she put this thing up there that Firefly was the best sci-fi TV show ever made. It was better than Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica. And, and you know, and my only comment was that I dream of a world where I am not alone in liking multiple sci-fi genres. I don't like to sit there and, oh, well, Babylon 5 is better than this or that or the other thing. Um, if it's got good production values, I tend to like it. Um, I really do tend to like it. I don't want to get into the discussion whether Firefly was better or not. I happen to like it. And the worst part of it is... Um, I never watched it when it was on. I, I watched, I think, Sci-Fi had it uh, as, uh, like, in syndication, and I watched it there. My God, was that a good show. I, I think I saw the movie before I saw the TV show, to be honest with you. And because uh, my understanding is Josh Whedon was the guy that, that was his baby. And uh, he, uh, 
he uh, it got canceled, and part of it was the network. I think it might have been Fox. Uh, they did the same thing with uh, the Babylon Five spinoff, Crusader. They showed the mo- they showed the, the the episodes out of sequence, and they did all this other shit, everything they could to hurt it, and so it got canceled. And then I think he was behind uh, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He he had a couple big shows, and he finally got enough clout in Hollywood that he could just go in there, you know. He could just go in there and say, hey, we need some more cowbell. We need to make a movie. And what he did is he made the movie so he could basically give uh, his characters an ending. It, you know, he could basically end it. He could jump the show to where, you know, he could basically go, do the movie, jump it out to where the, the series was eventually going to end. As I've been getting dirt from various uh, enterprises here, I've been slowly filling this in with dirt and lighting it up. I don't think I get any more spawns inside the place. If you've never seen Firefly, or the the movie was called Serenity, Firefly was the name of the ship, and Serenity... Serenity, I think, was the name of their ship. It was also the name of a battle that they fought in. And Firefly was the class of the ship, if I remember it right. God was at a good show. It had uh oh the guy who played Casey on Chuck, uh the big guy, uh he played kind of a uh pretty much had the same role he had in Chuck. He was a he was a big tough guy that wasn't maybe the smartest tool in the shed. And uh he was in it and he he had a really good role. His he had to have fun. If he didn't have fun playing that, then he did something wrong. Um there, there was a scene in there, the one girl, she's the one who plays uh, Deadpool's girlfriend in the Deadpool movies. She played a, I think the name was Companion, which was basically like the term they used for a, a prostitute. It was like, it'd be like a call girl. It'd be like a high-end escort. Um, kind of like in Battlestar Galactica, they call them socialators or something like that when that one came out. And, uh, she had a female client. She was like a mayor or a leader of a planet. And every time he saw those two together, he'd be like, I'll be in my bunk. And he'd just, he'd leave. That happened like three or four times during the episode. Um, but yeah, he had a really, really funny character to play in my um, First time I ever saw that guy as an actor, there's, a, there's an old movie it's called, this thing was back in the... I think it was the 70s. I think it was the 80s. It was called DC Cab. It had uh, Mr. T in it. Bill Maher was in it. That was back when he was trying to be an actor. There is a string of shitty, low-budget movies that he was in. That's one of them. And uh, I can't think of the guy's name, but he was in, I think the TV show was called Barney Miller. Uh, he was in there. He played the guy who owned the DC. He, he's played the guy who owned the cab. And cab uh, DC cab he owned it and uh, oh my god uh, he played he was like a real young actor and he did not play the hard ass in that one he was uh, like some young dumb kid fresh out of college didn't know what he was doing and uh, god was that a good movie real low budget I can't remember the name of the comedian there was this Hispanic comedian he was pretty much in his uh, prime during that. Uh, I don't even, the guy could be fucking dead for now, for all I know. There was a, it was like a Hispanic comedian, really well respected. And uh, he was in it. His uh, catch line was, 
It's tough to be a man, baby. And uh, he was in there. There, uh, and I don't. I should know where that guy's from. It was this older black guy. He played like a homeless guy in there. I think he might have been the one who played Grady on Sanford and Son, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. And uh, I think his I think his character's name was Doctor Rhythm or something like that. And uh, there was a point. There was like he was a homeless guy, and he was always like mooching for tips and shit like that. And there was one of them. He's like. Don't let your dick run your life. That's Mr. Rhythm's good advice. And he's like, I'll give you, I'll give you a buck for that one. And then later in the show, I can't remember, can't remember what it was. It was some other advice. Something like if you if you can make it through the night and wake up alive, then you're okay. And then the guy looked at me, yeah, I ain't paying you for that one. And uh I think it was the guy who played Grady and Sanford and Sutton. I'm not a hundred percent sure. They had this one guy, and I don't know where he matriculated from, but he played like the uh, the angry black guy. It was a cab driver, and uh, he. Uh, they all came into some good fortune. They tried to share it with him, and he was he was the angry black guy. He couldn't take nothing from Whitey, so he quit. And he was, I think he was selling shit on the corner or something like that. That's how he was getting by. Well, the one guy got kidnapped with, uh, God, it was like some ambassador kids or, you know, they were, they were either working for the, they were either working for like state officials or they were ambassadors kids. They were, uh, they were pretty high priority. Well, they thought the cab driver, the one who played, uh, Casey in, uh, Chuck, um, something Baldwin, might be Adam Baldwin or something. I don't think he's related to the other ones, but his last name is Baldwin, and he played on Serenity. They thought he was in on it, and the, the cab guys that knew him, they're like, yeah, he wasn't in on this. So they basically started pounding the streets trying to find out where he was, and the, the black guy ended up coming back to help. And the guy he managed to get to a phone, he managed to call, and the kids were like just totally cool because this isn't the first time they'd been kidnapped. So the kids, he's freaking out, and the kids are like, oh, it's okay. As soon as they get paid, we'll be fine. This is like the third time we've been kidnapped. And they were like grade school age. They were they were just not that old. And uh but he uh he ended up getting free. He called for help, and he basically told them, like, well, you know, I'm in the country. You know, he, he told them what he knew because he was in the trunk. And then he's looking out the window, and he's like, I can see Bruce Lee. That that was what he said. And they're like, Bruce Lee? Isn't he dead? And that, that was the other guy that was in there. It was... Uh, Oh, I can't think of the guy's name. He played the he played the bad guy in Lethal Weapon, and uh, he played the bad guy in Lethal Weapon, and he was on an episode of uh, Donald Trump's Apprentice. Uh, God, I can't think of that guy's name, but that that was back when he was in his cocaine heyday. Uh, he had a scene in there when they they came to him. They're like, "Hey, we got all this money. We want you in." And he goes, well, he goes, I'll be in on one condition. And they go, what's that? And he goes, I don't work on January the 8th. Because that's Elvis's birthday. And then he starts dancing. He's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. And he was just, he was a big drug addict back then. And it kind of worked for him for the roles he was getting. And uh, Gary Busey, that's the guy. And he's got a son, I think, that's actually a halfway decent actor. And... Uh, But they uh, they made a comment that uh, well Bruce Lee's dead and he goes oh man I've been telling you guys this for years they got him frozen with John Wayne down and as soon as they find a cure for what's wrong with him they're gonna bring him back and they're like oh yeah he, at one point in there uh, he was telling the the black guy uh, he almost got shot by the cops this was back in the eighties you know this this was not a new thing they knew it back then and he told him he goes. Man, what the hell were you doing picking up that gun? He goes, well, the guy was trying to rob us, and he dropped it. He goes, 
hey, you're fucking lucky the cops didn't shoot your ass and say you were high on PCP, because he goes, that's what they do to all the black people they shoot. They shoot them, and they say they're high on PCP, and he goes, you know what, I think the cops are lacing the bullets with PCP, so they got a reason for shooting everybody. And he, he was the conspiracy nut in the movie. And uh, he's like, yeah, man, I think Bruce Lee's dead. And uh, so what they're doing is they're looking for roads that sound like Bruce Lee. And they're like, well, I found a spruce knee. Well, that black guy, he's driving around, and he finally sees, like, a drive-in movie theater. And uh, he's like, he calls in. He calls in on the CB on the uh, cab radio, and he goes, it's him. It's him. It's Bruce Lee. I found that karate motherfucker. So he knew where they were. So they knew it was in it was in sight of the drive-in, and they knew which side of the drive-in. And then they ended up moving in, and they had all these like uh, these like fucking just scum of the earth trailer park trash uh, cabbies fucking busted in and freed everybody. Two of the guys, I can't remember the name of these guys, but they were like big time bodybuilders back then. Uh, they were, that was probably the height of their career. Cause back then those people that did that kind of stuff just didn't seem to have a good life expectancy. Bill Maher, this is one I, I don't know because I can't I can't really do Hulu anymore. But when I had Hulu uh, every year for Halloween, it was like three, four years in a row. They would have the uh, Elvira 13 or 20 days of Halloween or whatever. And it was all these uh, movies. I think they'd all been on her show. But it was uh, you could either watch them as is or you could watch them uh, as they were on TV hosted by Elvira. Um. If you like beautiful women, I highly recommend the Elvira Plus version. But, you know, if you really don't want that, then by all means, just get the regular old movie. But uh, he was in this one. It was, uh, God, I think it was Amazon Women of the Avocado Jungle or something like that. That was one that Bill Maher was in. Yeah, because that was back when they were doing steroids. And I'm, I'm listening to what I've said. From the, yeah, the, the, those bodybuilders, that, were, that was back from when they were still doing steroids really big. And those guys generally did not age well because of all the shit that they were doing. Okay, now I have to remember to come back here. Otherwise, I'm going to have stuff. I either got to light it up really good or I got to come and carve this down. It'll give me some blocks that I need anyways, but uh, I got to remember to do that. Otherwise, these things will be able to get up on here and walk around, and they'll be doing death from above on me as they jump. Uh, creepers will be jumping down and blowing me up when I'm not expecting them. Death from above, that's a battle tech uh, reference. I'm looking at a couple new Discord bots. Um, one of them is, I uh, can't remember the name of it, but it's another RPG, kind of like Epic RPG, RPG, which I have on there right now. And I don't mind it. It would be better if, uh, if more people were playing it because there's certain things you can't do if you're alone. Like you can't go hit a dungeon if you're alone. But I've been leveling up as best I can. And, uh, but this one here, apparently you have stats and you can choose races. So I'm thinking about adding that one on because I think it's free too. And then there's a trivia bot that I'm thinking about adding to the Discord.
you know, I really don't know what it is, but now that this stream's been up and running for a little bit, it's kind of smoothed out. But uh, it really seems like when I start these out, it's, I mean, it, it's not perfect. But when I start this out, it seems like it takes a while for this thing to calm down, and I have no idea. Like, I'm up to about 20 frames per second. Uh, normally, where when I was starting out, it was like four to eight. But from what I've been reading on it, your video isn't nearly as important as the audio. Because like the one guy said, he goes, you're going to find that a lot of the people that follow you uh, they just have you on in the background while they uh, while they do other stuff. They said your audio is much more important than your video. You know, the sad thing is I might let this sit for like a month while I, uh, you know, I, I might not touch this again for a month while I have time to evaluate the color palette and everything else and see if I like it before I touch anything else. But I got, I got a rough idea what I want to do, and this will help. And then, like, what I'll do is I'll just let it sit, and I'll just look at it every time I come here. Trying to smack that dude with a shovel, and I almost blew up. Oh, yeah, I got my sword out now. How you like them apples? Okay, while I'm here, I did light this up. I actually put a little bit more of this in. I lit up on the sides a little bit, trying to push back the darkness. And uh, the reason is, uh, one of the guys that, he's, he's still on here, he just doesn't play as much, which is kind of sad, but with the school and the COVID and everything, I completely understand. But uh, he has uh, part of his bay, he's got like a little bit of a build over here. Well, he's got a uh, wheat farm, and I need to get a villager over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a permanent way to get mm. villagers over here in case it happens again. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put another villager in there and get it going. I don't know if he was hit when we were griefed, or if uh, if it just died from like a lightning strike or something. But I want to get the villager back, and then I also want to be able to wait to get villagers up there because I want to make a uh, kind of a just a cheap raid farm. Mostly I want something that'll take the bad omen off me when I come out of the portal, so I don't accidentally trigger a raid at my trading hall. That's all I really care about. Hey, welcome aboard, whoever's here. Say hi in the chat. You're more than welcome. Glad to have you here. Feel free to check out the Discord. There's a link. I've actually confirmed it on mine. There's a link to the Discord. If for some reason it doesn't work, let me know and I'll get it fixed. But as far as I know, I've got a link to the Discord on there.
Okay, I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I need a break. I got to run to the bathroom. So I'm just going to kind of end the stream here. I want to thank everybody for coming. And I will try to be back on on Thursday night, 8 o'clock, same bat time, same bat channel. And then hopefully if I'm feeling good, I'll be able to do Jedi Fallen Order on Saturday. Um, I'm on Twitch. I'm on TikTok. Instagram is coming, but right now I don't have any content to put up there. But I want to thank everybody for coming on. Um, I want everybody to have a great day, and hopefully I will see you all here on Thursday. Thank you very much.